going to tell you, the, 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 the need of the hour, uh, people say, well, what's it going to come to? What's going to turn this thing around? I'll tell you what it's going to take. It's going to take some men like this right here that's willing to serve God and be obedient to the call of God and to step out into a day in a world where nobody wants preaching anymore uh, but still be faithful to the call and preach. And uh, I had some scripture on my mind. I want to read this before Brother Alex comes. Uh, but in the book of Romans, chapter number 10, of course, the famous verse in verse number 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I think it's important for every preacher to realize that salvation is not just for a certain number. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Now, it's almost preaching time now. Y'all better, y'all better. If I need to preach first to get y'all ready, then we'll do that. Uh, he didn't die just for a certain number, just for a certain few, but whosoever will, let him come be saved. He says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. But then the next verse says this, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? I'll say something, we made your own preaching around here. We like good singing, but we made your own preaching. Amen. God, God, God chose the foolishness of preaching. And we like good singing, and, and, and God can move through a song, but it takes the preached word of God. And that's why Paul told Timothy in the last days, he says, you're going to go into a day, they ain't going to hear it. They, 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 it'll go in one ear and out the other. They'll be seeking after another thing. Uh, teachers with itching ears, he says, but you be faithful. And he says, I charge you, you preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. You stand firm, you stand strong. I, regardless of whether they amen. I was thinking about this, Brother Alex, and I ain't gonna preach, but I am gonna say this. It's a wonderful, I told him, I said, this is a wonderful testimony. You got all these folks show up to hear you and support you. That's a blessing. And I don't say, I don't say if there's one person ought to be at the top of your prayer list, Brother Alex ought to be there this week. Him and Miss Sarah Beth, you ought to pray for this young family because I'm telling you, uh, he's entering into a world, uh, I'm talking about where the spiritual warfare gets real. Uh, gets real in a hurry, all right? And uh, you ought to pray for him. I, I, I was telling him, I said, man, this is a wonderful testimony. Good to, good to see this good number. But here's what I found out. I remember the first time I preached and I showed up to the church and it was everybody, all my friends and buddies was there and I, I appreciate it and I thank the Lord for it. But you know what I've learned? A lot of them that was there, it started with me. Many of them ain't there now. And everybody come around, they patted me on the back, told me, oh, how much they loved me, and they going to be praying for me. But the more I stayed in this book, and the more I preached what thus saith the Lord, the more of them turned their back on me and left. But don't quit. Whether they're here, whether they're not here, you be faithful to preach. God called you to preach. And you just rear back and preach. So I'm going to ask you to come. I'm going to do one more thing, and then we're going to turn him loose. Come on up here, Brother Alex. I'm going to ask all the men of God that's here tonight, and all the men of God. I know we've got several in our church, Brother Chris, Brother Tim, Brother Hill, and Brother John. Where y'all? I want y'all to come up here. Brother Jonathan, you come on. And uh, I'm going to gather around him. And uh, just, just for a moment, I want to have a time of prayer with him just before we turn him loose and, and uh, just ask God to help him and bless him and anoint him and give him a fresh touch and a fresh anointing. Come on up here. And uh, we'll just gather up here around him. Amen. 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 All right. Brother John, I'm going to ask you to lead us to the Lord. Let's pray, John. I would like to say that I do appreciate my church. I appreciate everybody that's come up to me and said they prayed for me. You don't know how much that means to a person that somebody take time out of their day to pray for you. And that's a blessing. And I'm thankful for my family that come and my friends. And That's a blessing too. God's been good to me and he's been good to my family. And uh, what excites me and thrills me is I've got a good family here on earth, but if they ever turn their backs on me and ever walk away from me, as a teenage boy one night, I got adopted into another family. Yeah. Not being the family of God. That's good, brother. Yeah. And then if my friends ever turn their backs on me and they ever walk away from me, I've got another friend. Amen. He said that he'd never leave me nor forsake me. He's a friend of friends. He's a friend so much that he went and died on the cross for my sins and saved me. 
and I thank the Lord for it. Amen. I'm going to be in First John uh, chapter 5. I'm just going to read a couple of verses. I'll just read these and then I'd like to pray and then give you what I've got. First John chapter 5, we'll start in verse 10. It says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not on God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. And he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Let's pray. Dear Lord, just going to ask you to forgive us our sins and forgive us where we failed you, Lord. And we thank you for another opportunity to come to your house, Lord, and worship you, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that everything that's said and done today brings honor and glory to your name, Lord. And Nobody else but you, Lord, is magnified in the service, Lord, and that you'll be uplifted and honored and glorified. And uh, We thank you for coming to the cross and dying for our sins, Lord, and we thank you for the death and the resurrection, Lord, and we thank you for your son coming, and we'll just pray that if there be one lost, Lord, that uh, they'd fall under conviction, Lord, and that you'd save them, Lord, and that they'd turn their life over to you, Lord, and we love you and we thank you. In your sweet, precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know when we come to the epistles and the letters in the Bible, it's often directed into an individual or to a church, many times to address a situation or to help an individual or help the church out. But when we come to 1 John, it speaks much to ensure that Jesus did in fact come as a human, but while he was here as 100% a human, he was also 100% divine. And that uh, not only... Does it assure that? But it ensures the believers that they, in fact, do have eternal life, especially in John, John, 1 John chapter 5. It assures the believers they have eternal life, but it also tells those that don't believe that they don't have eternal life. But when we look at our text, we see a mention of a record and we see a mention of life. The record being that God sent His Son for us that we could have eternal life and the life being found in His Son. And uh, we know that we're coming from a spiritual viewpoint in the text because if I look out across the congregation tonight, I don't see nobody dead. Everybody's alive and breathing. And I haven't bored anybody to death just yet. But, uh, but spiritually speaking, you either have life or you don't have life. And the Bible gives us a good, good example to examine ourselves to see whether or not we be in the faith and I'd like to try to just give a few attributes that you might have life, you might not have life, and maybe you can figure it out for yourself. But the first thing one must do to have life or to attain life is he's going to find it in Christ and they're going to find it in him alone. John 3.16 says, We all know that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. And then we go on down in that next same book, and he says in John 14.6 that, he is the way, the truth, and the life, and we'll not find life in any man but Jesus Christ. And I believe one must come to the realize that God did, in fact, send His Son for us. In fact, because of the fall of man and because men rebelled against God and we fell short of His glory, we were in need of a Savior because we were due our punishment and we were due our penalty for our sin. But even though God be a God of wrath and of judgment, in so much He's a God of love, it's much that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him shall have everlasting life. And he came and bared our sins, our penalty on the cross at Calvary. And then Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that is the good gospel news that now that this Savior has come and he has died on the cross for our sins and resurrected, that we can have life and we can find it in him. But I also find with life comes change. And I can testify that to myself. That I know I'm not the same person I used to be and I'm not the same person who I was. And Jesus saved me as a teenage boy one night. 
He changed some things about me and changed some things in me. I don't necessarily talk the way I used to talk, and I normally don't act the way I used to act. And I could say that he still changed me. I think of the leopards, or the ten leopards in the Bible. Uh, the Bible says that as they went, they were changed. And I can also testify to the fact that he's still working on me, and he's still changing me every single day. Second Corinthians two, or Second Corinthians five seventeen says, therefore. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, old things are passed away. Behold, all things come new. I can't help but think about blind Bartimaeus. When Jesus passed by his way, he was in a bad way. He sat by the wayside begging. He was blind and he was a beggar. But then Jesus passes by his way and he starts to cry out for mercy. He says, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus calls him and then Jesus asks him, he says, What would thou have me to do? Bartimaeus says, that you might give me my sight. If Jesus gives him a sight, makes him whole. But that's not the part that amazes me the most about that whole story is the fact that this man just received his sight and he doesn't, he doesn't go to his mom and dad and say, hey, I can see. He doesn't go into the town of Jericho and say, go sightseeing and look at all these things he's heard about. Instead, he, the Bible says at the end of that chapter that he follows Jesus immediately. It says immediately that he followed after Jesus. And that's a blessing. And that's another thing is when Jesus passes by, I can't help but think something's going to change when Jesus comes by, either in the individual or in the church. You know when Jesus shows up in a service because people tend to be a little more attentive and they tend to, tend to be a little more active when he comes into a service. One of my favorite stories in the Bible of change is the maniac of Gadara. I know we all know it, but I can't help but not mention it is because I think it's one of the most beautiful pictures of change in the Bible. Yeah. Here's a wild man hanging out in the tombs, got demons filled all in him. No man could tame him and nobody, no man could chain him down. But then again, here comes Jesus. He passes by and when he's done with him, the Bible says that he's closed and in his right mind. Yeah. And only Jesus can bring change into your life and I believe change will bring conviction and then conviction will bring courage. And I think change is a good thing. Yeah. I also see it brings change, but also see it brings communion. communion. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some, but exhorting an one another so much the more as we see the day approaching. Yeah. I believe one has this change and has this life, there's going to be some communion with the brethren and communion yeah. with the church. Yeah. I believe if you've got the life in you, you're going to support your church, you're going to come to church, you're going to enjoy church. Yeah. And you're going to want to see the church go forward for God. But not only will you love the church and support the church, you'll love your brethren and support the brethren. The Bible says that he gives us a new commandment, that we love one another. And within yourself, you'll not love this other person. You can try to love your brethren all you want, but without him, you'll not love him the way he wants you to love him. And I also see it brings forth commitment. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit thy works to the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. I believe one life will be committed to the Lord. I believe one with life will be committed to the Lord, to His way, His will, His work, and want to see the gospel go forward. I can't help it. Blesses my heart when I see older saints of God that just come in here and they just feel like I. I hear JC say it all the time, and it blesses my heart. He just he'll sit there and he'll say. I come, but I just don't know what the Lord's got for me. And I don't know if he realizes it or not, but he's doing the work of God right there because it's a blessing to me. Yeah. Being faithful yeah. rubs off on me and makes me want to be more faithful and it encourages yeah. me to keep going. But I think of one with commitments, one that don't quit when life gets hard. They just keep pressing towards the mark and keep serving God. And I hope to God that one day I can look back at my life when my race is running and I'm done with this course of life. I can look back and say, I've tried my best to be committed to the Lord and His works and His will. And though my outward man may perish every day, my inward man is renewed day by day. And I bless His name for that. And that's some stuff you might find if you have the life. But if you don't have the life, this is some things that may stick out or some things that I might observe of one that don't have life. I believe one without life is most confused. Uh, they're confused or they just don't quite understand the gospel and they don't want to accept the record of the gospel. I think of Nicodemus when questioning Jesus, how can a man be born of the flesh? It's already been born. 
And Jesus goes on to tell him, it's not be born of the flesh, but be born of the Spirit. And I can testify that before I was saved, I didn't understand that. I would look at that verse and I'd say, I don't get how you can be born. You know, you would hear it preached over and over again, be born again, be born again. And it didn't make sense to me until I finally got born again that you're being born of the Spirit, not of the flesh. And, uh, but they're confused. They have a hard time accepting the gospel. And uh, they're most time ones that will debate and question God and how He works and how He operates instead of they have a hard time realizing that the gift is free and they just, it's just too easy for them and they don't want to accept it. Not only are they confused, but they're conformed. The things of this world and things in this world conform them, and they've got too much to gain in this world. I think of the rich young ruler who in the Bible said he had many possessions, and Jesus passes by his, one, by his way one day, and uh, he's, this man wants to follow after Jesus, but Jesus says, you know, take your possessions and sell and give to the poor, and... The Bible goes on to say that he walks away sorrowfully. And because of his pride and because of his possessions, he missed out on that eternal life. And I can't help but think, uh, but the Bible says to be conform, not conformed, but be ye transformed. And uh, even though the gift of eternal life is free, the following Jesus might cost you a little bit. It may cost you friends, it may cost you family, it may cost you promotion but it's going to cost you something. And I think too often that many people sit in churches and many people sit outside these walls and are very close to fully surrendering and following Jesus, but they've got one possession, one thing in their life they just don't want to let go of, and they'll let it cost them their eternal life. As I've grown in faith and as I walk with the Lord further and further each day, it's not a boastful thing, but that's just true. It seems like the things I once desired are slowly going away and away. And it's just as I walk with Him, it's just I want more of Jesus and more of Him. And the less things in this world, they don't entice me like they once did. Uh, lastly, those of that life will be cut off. They'll be cut off or they'll be cast out. Because without life, they're going to miss out on eternal life. Jesus being life, Matthew 10, says, But whosoever... Deny me before men, him will also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. And the sad reality is, like we just talked about being conformed, there's going to be a lot of people that possessions keep them from receiving the eternal life that God has to offer them. You don't realize what you're missing out on with life that Jesus has to offer until you get him and receive him. He's got so much joy and peace and hope and honor to bring you and courage. And my prayer is that you'll trust Him and believe Him and put your faith in Him and find that life that He has to offer you. Amen. That's all I've got. Amen. That's the truth, praise God. And uh, I thank God for it. And uh, I, I remember I remember talking to him, and and uh, I said I said best advice I could give you is number one, stay in the book. But then number two, just be yourself. Just be yourself. Uh, I'm afraid some preachers get out and they try to do too much imitation of somebody else, you know. And and I I, I remember thinking the first time I ever preached, these other preachers testified to it. I said, well, I didn't even know what it was going to be like. I didn't have, I ain't never preached before, so I didn't know. And uh, God, God will take you, teach you, show you, and develop you into who he wants you to be. But uh, until then, just be yourself. And, you know, I, I watched him get up, and, and uh, I just, I, I, it was just Brother Alex that was here. And I appreciate that. But here's most of all what I appreciate tonight. He told you the truth. And I was thinking as he was preaching, I said, he's going to get to go home tonight. He's going to get to lay his head on the pillow, and he's going to sleep real good. A lot better tonight than what he did last night because he's going to be able to wash his hands. You understand, your blood's not going to be required of him no more. He did his job. He preached the truth. He gave you the gospel. I'm talking about, I'm talking about straight down the line, growing by our street tonight. You know what the Bible says? Examine yourself. 
Search the scriptures. You, just, you, you think you got eternal life. You think you're saved. You think you're going to heaven. You better look at the book, friend. Because at the end of the day, you'll not go to heaven because you want to go to heaven. You think you're going to go to heaven. You, you feel like you deserve and you've been a good person, worked a job, and was good to your neighbor. No, no, no. That ain't what's going to get you to heaven. What's going to get you to heaven is your faith uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to have to, you say, well, I don't know if that's happened or not. Read the book. And he preached it tonight. He said there, there should be some things in your life. There'll be a change. I like he even got on the faithfulness part. I like it. That's a good, that's going to make a good preacher right there. If he preached that on his first message, praise God, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. I like that. Just call it like it is. How are you going to say you're right with God and you won't even come to church? You won't support the man of God. You won't support church and, and you're not faithful. They, you, better, you better read the book. What about you tonight? Here's the goal of every preacher. I wish to God I could save the whole world. I wish I could. But I can't. All I can do is get up and preach the message and give an invitation. And the man of God did that tonight. Now the question is, what are you going to do with it? What's going to be your response? Are you saved? What a joy it is to get to be together like this. And I know there's some folk from other churches, and we don't get to worship together very often. But aren't you, I, I get excited, and I think about heaven, because we're all going to get to be together. And I'm looking forward to it, but no doubt in a crowd this size tonight, I dare say some of them in here tonight, if today should be the day, you wouldn't be there. Because according to the book, according to the book, you're not saved. What are you saying, preacher? You ought to get saved. Amen. While the door's open, while the invitation has been extended, you ought to get saved. You ought to get saved. You ought to get born again. You say, I don't understand it. Do like Brother Alex said. Just come try it. And get, let, let the Lord do the work. Then you, he'll give you the understanding. I appreciate the truth, brother. And I thank the Lord for the word of God. Amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight. I want you to bow your head. I'm going to say a word of prayer. If God spoke to your heart, this altar is open. Why don't you come tonight? Are you saved? Do you know for sure that if today should be your day, that heaven's going to be your home? Some of you older saints, maybe y'all just need to come tonight. Maybe you just need to come get on this altar and pray for this young preacher, if nothing else. The worst thing we could do is to hear the gospel message preached and let it go in one ear and out the other and no response. Are you saved? Father, thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the message, but thank you for the messenger tonight. Thank you for his faithfulness. Thank you uh, for a man that will get up in humility. Lord, we didn't see uh, a popularity contest. We just seen one child of God trying to honor his king tonight by doing what you've called him to do and I appreciate the faithfulness and I pray God you bless him for it I pray you give him souls for his labor but most of all tonight I pray for those that got to hear the message those that are standing here today Lord I pray that examine themselves and I pray God you'd speak to them during this imitation hour God reveal the truth to them may you illuminate thy truth to their hearts tonight. And may they see themselves for who they really are and where they really stand. And if they're here tonight and they're not saved, they're not ready to die, I pray, God, they don't leave the same way they came. And may they come, place their faith in you, and be changed by the power of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. If God spoke to your heart.